How much does a neutrino weigh? The new measurements set the upper limit. Scientists have succeeded in determining the upper range of the neutrino's mass. By measuring the energy distribution of the electrons released during the beta decay of tritium, physicists determined that the neutrino had a mass of no more than 0.8 electron volts. While we still don't know the exact mass of the neutrino, determining its upper limit brings us closer to understanding the nature of these elusive particles, the role they play in the universe, and the impact they can have on our current theories. Neutrinos, next to photons, are the most abundant particles in the universe. However, scientists don't know much about them. This is because these particles interact very weakly with matter and are extremely difficult to study. So faint that they are often referred to as, ghost particles. Neutrinos have an incredible ability to penetrate. For example, a planet such as Earth poses almost no obstacle to them. Scientists estimate that 65 billion neutrinos pass through one square centimeter of our planet's surface facing the sun every second. These particles in great abundance and every second pierce our bodies, and we usually have no idea about it. The first speculations about the existence of neutrinos appeared in the 1930s. But their first experimental observation took place almost a quarter of a century later. Over the course of research, it was discovered that there are at least three types of these particles, electron, muon and tau neutrinos, and each of them has its counterpart in the world of antimatter, i.e. each has its own antiparticle. These particles have no electrical charge and are produced in nuclear reactions in the interiors of stars, as well as in reactors on Earth. Relatively recently, it was discovered that these particles oscillate, that is, they are constantly transforming from one type to another. This phenomenon means that the observed neutrinos must have a certain, albeit very small, mass. Without knowing the mass of neutrinos, our understanding of the universe will remain incomplete. German scientists from the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology KIT, have been studying neutrinos for years. The Katrin experiments, Karlsruhe Tritium Neutrino, in which an international group of physicists took part, conducted in the spectrometer located at KIT, recently broke an important barrier in neutrino physics, which is important for both elementary particle physics and cosmology. Scientists have succeeded in determining the upper limit of the mass of the neutrino. The description of these experiments was published in the journal Nature Physics. Scientists from the Czech Republic, Germany, Russia, the USA and Great Britain participate in the Katrin experiments. They analyze the beta decay of tritium, an unstable isotope of hydrogen, to determine the mass of the neutrino by the energy distribution of the electrons released in the decay process. To measure the decay energy of electrons, they use a giant spectrometer housed in kit, which is 23 meters long and 10 meters high. Since the start of the Katrin project, measurements have been constantly improving. Katrin is an experiment with the highest technological requirements, which works like a perfect clockwork, enthuses Guido Drexlin from kit. Project leader. His colleague Christian Weinheimer of the University of Munster adds that the decisive factors in setting the upper limit for the neutrino mass were increasing the frequency of the signal and reducing background noise. In-depth analysis of the data collected during the Katrin experiments, launched in 2019, required a huge effort of a team of scientists led by two coordinators. Suzanne Mertens from the Adam Mikovich Institute of Physics, Max Planck and from the Technical University of Munich and Magnus Schlosser from KIT. The previous upper limit for the mass of a neutrino, 
also established by the Catron experiments, was 1.1 electron volts eV. However, researchers already had indirect evidence that these particles should be lighter than 1 electron volt, but it took until now for this to be demonstrated for the first time by direct measurements. The scientists in their study were only able to determine the upper limit of the neutrino mass, but they say that as the sensitivity of the instruments increases, they may be able to determine more. In Catron, the neutrinos produced by the beta decay of tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, are weighted. When a tritium nucleus converts to helium, it ejects an electron and an electron neutrino. More precisely, its antiparticle of the same mass called an electron antineutrino. The antineutrino is lost. But the electron is channeled into a 23-meter steel vacuum chamber in a spectrometer where its energy is accurately measured. Knowing the energy of the electron alone and the combined energy of the electron and the antineutrino, scientists can determine how much energy was lost with the antineutrino, and thus can determine the energy, or mass, of the antineutrino. The latest result is based on data from the first full-strength run of the experiment, which took place in late 2019. These data put the upper limit of the antineutrino mass at 0.8 electron volts. If you converted it to kilograms, the result would be 1 in the 36th decimal place. That's about 500,000 times less than an electron. This is a huge achievement, but scientists are still unable to give a lower limit for the mass of the neutrino. They hope that further experiments and analysis of the data collected in them will help to get closer to answering this question. It may also turn out that the Catron project fails to measure the minimum mass of a neutrino, especially if the mass of the particle is less than 0.2 electron volts which may be beyond the sensitivity of the instruments. This is the first time that a direct neutrino mass experiment has entered the mass range below 1 electron volt, which is of great importance to cosmology and particle physics. The particle physics community is excited that Catron has broken the 1 electron volt barrier, said John Wilkerson of the University of North Carolina, a neutrino expert who chairs the Catron executive board. The scientists involved in the Catron project reveal their next goals. Further measurements of the neutrino mass will last until the end of 2024. Scientists at that time in order to make the best use of the potential of the experiments. We'll update the equipment with technological innovations on an ongoing basis to further increase the sensitivity of the device and eliminate background noise. In 2025, Catron is to be enriched with a new Tristan detector system, which will significantly increase the capabilities of the instrument. Modern humans reached Europe much earlier than previously thought. Homo sapiens ventured into the European territories of the Neanderthals much earlier than previously thought. Stone tools and a child's tooth discovered in one of the caves in southern France were left behind by representatives of Homo sapiens, scientists believe. These finds suggest that modern man was already present in Western Europe 54,000 years ago. Years ago 10,000 years earlier than previously reported. In the Mandarin Cave in France's Rhone Valley, scientists have found a baby tooth and unique stone tools. According to them, the tooth belonged to a Homo sapiens child, as did the stone tools. These discoveries, made by a team of archaeologists and paleoanthropologists led by Ludovic Slimak of the University of Toulouse, push the date of Homo sapiens' arrival in Western Europe to about 54,000 years ago. 
years ago. Another remarkable finding is that two species, Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, alternated inhabiting Mandarin Cave in southern France. The research results were published in the journal Science Advances. Excavations at Mandarin have been carried out since 1990. The cave contains archaeological remains in layers dating back over 80,000 years. Years. Mandarin is like Neanderthal Pompeii. Admittedly, without any natural disasters. But with the continuous accretion of sediments in the cave, caused by strong winds, says Slimak. His team discovered a layer, known as, Layer E, containing at least 1,500 cut flint tools, made more precisely than other items from the upper and lower layers. They were very small in size, some were smaller than a centimeter. We've never found anything like this in Neanderthals, says Slimak, who specializes in Neanderthal communities. The expert believes that they were probably arrowheads, unknown in Europe at that time. He attributes these finds to a culture called the Neronian, associated with several sites in the Rhone region. In 2016, Slimak and his team visited Harvard's Peabody Museum to compare their findings with a collection of carved fossils from the Kezara Kill site at the foot of Mount Lebanon, one of the main sites of Homo sapiens expansion east of the Mediterranean. The similarity between the techniques used on the fossils and those used to create the stone tools convinced Slimak that the Mandarin finds were the oldest traces of Homo sapiens found in Europe. A milk tooth found in Layer E confirmed these assumptions. In total, researchers found nine teeth in Mandarin Cave, belonging to six individuals. Their analysis was undertaken by Clement Zanelli a paleoanthropologist at the University of Bordeaux. His verdict was clear. The deciduous tooth from Leia, E, was the only Homo sapiens tooth found at the site. This fossil molar belonging to a child provides the earliest known evidence of a modern human species in Western Europe, the Natural History Museum in London said in a statement. The team of archaeologists then used a pioneering technique that analyzes layers of soot from the cave walls and reveals traces of ancient fires. Researchers have shown that the modern human population occupied this area of the Rhone Valley for about 40 years, says Slimak. At some point, the two populations either coexisted in the cave or in the same territory, the researcher concludes. He imagines that Neanderthals may have served as guides for Homo sapiens, leading them to the best flint sources available, some of which were up to 90 kilometers away. Nothing new. Exactly the same thing happened when Europeans started colonizing both Americas and Australia, notes Slimak. The Mandarin findings are really exciting and add another piece to the puzzle of how and when modern humans arrived in Europe, concludes Professor Chris Stringer, co-author of the study and specialist in human evolution at the Natural History Museum in London. A better understanding of the overlap between modern humans and other hominins in Eurasia is essential to understanding their interactions and how we became the last remaining human species.